Welcome then to our second video where we're going to look at the property of soil color. And what I've done is excavate some material from this pit, laid it up here so I can access it easily during the video. Colors in soil science, is, we use a very structured system called the Munsell soil color charts, which are available in various forms. And the Munsell system is covered in detail in section 3.6 of the handbook. So I won't cover the basics of it, but just how we use it in the field. So in the Munsell soil color book, each hue, each gradation of hue is given its own page. And a hue, for example, would be yellow or red or yellow red, a combination of the two. So each page in the book is arranged around various hues. In much of Western Canada, our parent materials are often found on the 2.5Y or yellow page. And most of these tones are somewhat olive in tone. So we can think of it as a page with olive colors. Our A and B horizons typically are found on the 10YR page. So often this is where we would start if we were beginning with the A horizon. If we're in British Columbia where it's wetter, we might get redder tones such as those we'd see on the 7.5 YR page. The final pages would occur if we were in a very wet soil, a soil which is permanently saturated, and we call these the gray colors. And they're a very blue-gray color. The iron in these soils is reduced, and it gives us these very dull blue-gray colors. But we're dealing here with a very uh, soil rich in oxygen, and we're going to be typically dealing with the 10YR and the 2.5YR pages. Each page then has a variety of chips on it. And the pages are arranged such that the long axis of the page is the value of the color. And this is the lightness and darkness. So we go some, from very dark colors at the bottom of the page to very light colors at the top of the page. The short axis of the page is the chroma. And the chroma really describes how bright or how intense the color is. So the way that we use these pages is then we compare each soil sample behind the chip to find the one that matches the best. And typically we like to do our colors when they're moist and when they're dry, because they will differ depending on the moisture content of them. So we'll begin with our C horizon and turn to the 2.5 Y page. I'll take that page out so that I can hold up the material behind it. So the way we do the test is very simple. You simply get a piece of the soil, hold it up behind the Munsell chart to find the color that it most closely is associated with. In the C horizon, we have some very white colored calcium carbonate, but we're trying to get it for the dominant color or the matrix color. So in this case, the closest match for the dry soil is 2.5Y and the value is 5 and the chroma is 2. So 2.5Y, 5 slash 2. For each of these colors, there's a corresponding word descriptor for it. So 10YR5 slash 2 is shown on this page as gray, or sorry, 2.5Y5 slash 2 is shown as grayish brown. So next we want to moisten this sample and do the same color comparison. So when you're in the field, you can moisten a sample, you just can't dry it out very effectively. So sometimes you have to take your samples back and allow them to dry for the dry color. So I'm just adding some moisture here. I'm again comparing it to the colored chips. And typically what we find is that the value of the color should get darker when we add the moisture to it. So the value will decrease, and this one would correspond to 2.5y4 slash 2. 
So we've decreased by one value unit, which would be very typical when we go from a dry to a moist sample. So that's our C horizon. For our B horizon, we would go instead to the 10YR page. So the 10YR page, I'm taking a piece of that sample. I can hold it up behind it. And I compare it to my various options. It's sometimes a little frustrating because you would like to go between two chips. But typically, the Canadian system would tell us to stick with the whole numbers, not to try to uh, divide them in half. So this is a brighter material, certainly. And it would correspond to a 10YR 4 slash 3 color. And 10YR 4 slash 3 is brown, according to the Munsell color system. So again, I'll spray that color. The moisture reduces the value somewhat. And in this case, it's been reduced to 10YR3 slash 2. And 10YR3 slash 2 is very dark grayish brown, according to the Munsell system. The final color we'll do then is the darker A horizon. So here's some of the A horizon here. I'll do it first of all with the dry color. Again, it's on the 10YR page. And the best fit there looks to be 10YR4 slash 1. 10YR4 slash 1. That corresponds to a dark gray color, according to the Munsell system. Then when I moisten that up, compare it again, we'll get that characteristic decrease in color and the best fit there, actually we're getting a small change in chroma as well, is probably 10YR3 slash 2. And a 10YR3 slash 2 is very dark grayish brown. So it's a relatively simple assessment of color. It contains lots of information for us about the processes that have been affecting the soil. And it's one of the key properties we look at when we're out in the field looking at soils.